Hey everybody, this is Gabriel Logan on the Block TV podcast. Thank you for joining. January 9th, 3.24 p.m. I mean a.m. Sorry that I didn't do the music. Uh, I want to talk about this television show. I know I'm a little late. It's called Love on the Spectrum. And it's, uh, it's about a year old. And my sister was telling me about it. I was like, you know what? I should give this show a chance considering I'm on the spectrum. I know, right? It sucks balls. Uh, <laughs> it's a goddamn fucking curse. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about it because it's painfully awkward. But here's what I want to talk about because nobody seems to really, you know, want to talk about the elephant in the room. None of these people on this show have any siblings. Have you noticed that? No one on this goddamn show have any siblings at all. It is painfully awkward to watch. Because you have all these bizarre people on here who are painfully awkward. Like you have this one guy, Michael, who is just, I mean, he is funny. Let, let's The guy could be a comedian oh, tomorrow. I mean, the guy is hilarious. But his standards are really weird and too high. But that one girl, though, that girl was a bitch. I'm sorry, but that girl's a fucking bitch. He's being really respectful and super nice to her. And this guy, Michael, is trying really hard and he buys her stuff. And he took her to a nice restaurant, like right on the water. And he's trying so hard to be impressive and be a nice guy. And she's just being a complete bitch. And then she was saying, oh, I was having an anxiety episode or whatever. And then he was being respectful. Like, hey, um, he goes, you're not having anxiety, are you? He goes, he goes I just want to make sure that you're being comfortable. And, you know, he's being a very kind, generous person. Like, Michael really is being a generous guy. I applaud him for what he's doing. And that girl's being a fucking bitch. And then she just is just giving him the cold shoulder the whole time. And it's like, you know what? Fuck her. Seriously, fuck her. She's such a bitch. Why did he even go out with her? She's so rude. She's so arrogant. She's not even giving him the time of day. It's like, dude, that, that guy's a compassionate, like, funny, kind-hearted guy. You don't deserve someone like that. That girl's being a fucking bitch. You, he deserves... That guy, Michael, deserves someone way better than her. She's... Oh, God. I I hate chicks like that, man. God. I, I, I don't... I don't get how people can be that cruel like that. Like, that guy's putting everything out there. He's paying for dinner. He buys her stuff. Being such a nice guy, you could at least fucking be have some dignity and fucking class and respect and be appreciative of a guy who's trying to, like, you know, be nice to you. Maybe give him, like, a fucking kiss or something. And she's just, like, you know, being like a bitch. Just like, hey, you know, uh, you know. And, it, like, he's, like, totally into anime, too. But he's not really into, like, you know, he's not really into, like, he's into Comic-Con, but he's not really into, like, the, like, the weird, like, <laughs> like, anime stuff. But he's into, like, the comic book convention, but he dressed up as the skipper. And he's being funny. He's being a funny guy. He's just a, he's a really funny person. I think he's hilarious. Um, even his jokes are hilarious. And she's just being like your typical stuck up bitch. I, I can't stand that woman, dude. She's so stuck up. Like even when she was there, she just acts like she, she just is acting like the world owes her the world, like owes her everything. It comes off so narcissistic and so self-replicating and so repulsive. It's just, oh my God, I can't stand women like that. I, I'm sorry, Michael. Like, I, I don't know if he's ever listening to my podcast or anybody, but seriously, Michael deserves better than that woman. God, she's horrible. And, but you know what's funny? I was watching... This other episode with this girl, Maddie. And I didn't know it was in Australia until later. I thought it was England. But they had this one girl, Maddie, who actually seems relatively normal. Like, out of all the people that I'm watching, I mean, I'm on, what, the third, fourth episode right now? And she seems relatively normal. She doesn't come off as weird or 
different or whatever. Uh, the other ones came off painfully awkward. Just painfully awkward. Um, but Maddie, I actually like her a lot. She actually does have a really nice smile. I got to admit, she actually has a nice smile. And she has some really good traits. Um, and Michael, he's actually a very nice guy and he's hilarious. He's actually a very uh, funny person. But, oh my God, dude, he deserves a great girl. I hope Michael finds... I mean, if I get to the second season and I see him with a great girl, he deserves someone great. Like, that's upsetting to me that a girl is that stuck up. Man, I can't stand that girl. She's horrible. I just can't believe that she's so stuck up. It's like, I would have called her out on that and be like, what's your fucking problem? You know, you're being a stuck up bitch. Like, I would have called her out on it. I would have been like, why? What's up your ass? Like, I would have called her out on it. Like, I mean, he's being a respectful gentleman, which I applaud him for. But still, at the same time, you got to call her out on that shit, man. That's ridiculous. Just acting like that. Like, he's buying her that stuff. He's being a nice guy. And she just keeps blowing him off. It's like, look, if you're not interested in the guy, just say so. Just say, hey, just be honest. Just instead of messing with the guy's heart like that, just go, hey, look, you seem like a nice guy. Just go, look, you seem like a nice guy, but we ain't jiving, you know? Just say that. Just go, hey, well, you seem like a nice guy, um, but I'm not feeling it. We don't seem like we have a lot in common. I would like to be friends with you. Um, but I'm not feeling a connection, but you seem like a wonderful person. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings or anything, but I think you're a nice guy and I would like to be your friend. You seem wonderful, but I'm not feeling a connection with you. Um, but I really do hope the best that you find someone. And you know what? That actually did happen to me once. A girl that I really liked. Drove all the way to San Clemente to go out with me. And she actually did do that. She said, yeah, I would love to go out with you again. But she found someone else. And she wrote me and said, and she actually had the dignity and the class to write me and say, you know what? I'm sorry this isn't working, but I have to be honest with you. I found I'm going out with someone else and we're actually hitting it off. And I told you that I would go out with you. But unfortunately, I really like this guy. And um, I'm going to be seeing him a lot more. So I just want to let you know that I'm not going to go out with you a second time. And I, I apologize for that. But I really do hope the best for you in your search of finding someone. And, uh, you know, and I, I do wish you all the best. And I was like, I even wrote her and said, you know what? I am a little disappointed that I'm not going on a second date with you because I think you're gorgeous. And I really thought I hit it off with you on the first date. But you know what? You have dignity, you have class, and you're the first person that's ever done this. And I applaud you for this because I wish more women were like you. Because I really like that you did that. That shows the content of your character. And I just wish more women had more dignity and class and respect for other people like you do. Because I do that for everybody and I wish more people would. And I'm so thankful that you did. So I appreciate it, and good, best of luck to you and that guy. I hope it works out, and I hope I can find my lucky someone. And it, and that, and that. I mean, yeah, it, it didn't work out, but look at it. She was nice, and she gave me a nice message, and, you know, that's respectful. That's being a respectful person. That's having etiquette. That's the problem nowadays. You have people who are dickheads. And they don't care who they hurt. And she has etiquette and has class. A lot of people don't have that anymore. And that's the problem. Like, look at that one girl. My God, that girl dating that guy Michael. And, you know, he's like buying her that weird-ass plush thing. Trying to be all nice and being a good guy. And takes her to a nice restaurant. She's like, oh, I'm having an anxiety attack. I'm not used to places this formal. It's like, give me a fucking break. Anxiety. You realize you realize I had diarrhea and I still went out on a fucking date because I was so nervous. And then I got I drank a bunch of alcohol to calm my nerves. If you want something bad enough, you'll go for it. Quit fucking around. Like that's what pisses me off. If you want something bad enough, you won't give a fuck. 
Just like when I really liked that girl from the Philippines, I lost weight for her. I lost over 45 pounds. I gained it back, but I lost it for her. I tried to go to the Philippines to meet her. That's what upsets me. It's like, people have no idea. It's like, if you really want something bad enough, you'll make it work. That's why I get annoyed too when people end relationships just because of distance. If you really love someone and you really care about someone, you won't care. Quit using that as an excuse. I'm tired of those excuses. If you really love someone and you really care about someone as you claim, you won't give a damn where they are or how they are. You'll go anywhere in the world to be with that person. If you're madly in love with someone, you would go to the moon and back as many times as possible just to be with that person. If you truly love someone, look at Anthony Bourdain. He literally dropped out he actually dropped out of a year of high school just to be with his high school sweetheart. That's how much he loves somebody. That he risked everything from high school to be with his high school sweetheart. And they were together for like a few decades. I mean, unfortunately, it didn't work out because she didn't like the fame. And they probably did drugs together. But I'm just saying... That's my point. They actually were madly in love with each other. And he dropped out and he did everything for her. He was a hopeless romantic. He was madly... When he, when Bourdain sets his eyes on someone, he'll do whatever it takes to not be alone. He'll do whatever it takes. Bourdain doesn't like to be alone. He doesn't. He's, bro he's a very broken person. He'll do whatever it takes to not be alone. If he's madly in love with someone, he will do whatever it takes to not make that person leave them. So. That's what happens. But. I'm hoping I'll find someone. It sucks, but. I'm hoping. I'm going on a bunch of dating apps. I I'm on this app called Hickey. It's a Spectrum app, so I'm on that one right now. Hopefully I can find somebody, because being single sucks. Um, so I had a really good birthday, though, and I can't believe I'm 34. And That was pretty cool. I went out to eat with some friends, and it just never ends, man. It's pretty cool. Like I keep going out to eat and doing stuff, and thank you to all these subscribers. This is so cool. And, and also... Um, I also want to say, please, Texas, do the right thing and don't have that lunatic Abbott as your governor. Like, I don't like Newsom at all, but holy shit, he's more normal than Abbott by far. Um, but man, that's crazy. But anyway, uh, yeah, this show is painful to watch, but I really hope I do find somebody because being single sucks. I really want to get laid. I definitely want to, you know, fuck a transgender woman in the ass and jerk her cock off. You know, <laughs> like, I haven't had sex in so long. I'm losing my fucking mind. I really am losing my mind. You guys haven't had sex. I seriously haven't had sex in like five or six years and I'm losing my fucking mind. Like, it really sucks how long it's been and I haven't had sex. It's 2022. I'm 34 years old, and I want to get laid. And that's one of the reasons I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to get healthier and eat better. I'm going to probably, after this show, I'm definitely going to probably smoke some weed. I got some sour kush I'm probably going to smoke soon. But, like, um, I just, I need to lose weight. And I got to lose weight, and I'm looking at apartments, and I'm trying to look for jobs right now, and I'm trying to, like, do my podcast, and looking for part-time work and I just I gotta get stuff going man I'm 34 years old I want to have a life I want to get married and I want to get laid and get paid and you know and I think I deserve love like everybody else and also it's just 
it's crazy. Like, I have a stepsister who's a decade older than me, and she's gorgeous, and she's single. And I'm like, how is that possible? She's got an amazing figure. She's had the same body size since she was like 15. She hasn't gained a pound. It's insane how good she looks. And she's single? How the fuck is that possible? That's like that's like saying like Jennifer Aniston is single. Like, what? <laughs> I know that's an exaggeration, but I think my stepsister is one of the most fucking gorgeous, intelligent, strong people I've ever seen in my life. Um, anyway, thanks so much for listening. Please buy something through my links. So I can make a little commission. Um, but I'm going to try and do my best to get healthier this year. Because I really want to have a better life. And I, I want the doctors to look at me and go, Hey, your numbers have really improved. And, you know, I think I'll feel a lot better. So, anyway. Thanks so much for listening. And, uh, man. OnlyFans sucks. <laughs>